at it. Oh. All right. Yeah, that's my jam. Uh, 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 yeah. Streets of Rage 2. Represent. Uh, yeah. Hey there. Audience. My peeps. Uh, I'm John. You don't know that by now. That's probably actually very likely. Uh, so, I was over at a friend's today, and they record themselves playing Portal. And I'm like, that's lame. Like, who, who cares? Those games are bad. So, I decided, hey, I decided, hey, what's better than Portal? The Sega Genesis. So, I'm here, and I'm going to play some Genesis games. Uh, it took me a long time to get this uh, working properly, and now now that I have, I'm, I'm stoked. I hope I can do something like that with the, sub ah, with the Super Nintendo at some point. But... Regardless, uh, so we're starting off. We're gonna we're gonna do a bunch of these games tonight. Uh, I recently took my entire Genesis collection and dumped the ROMs into my computer so I can stream them. I thought it would be as easy as that, and it wasn't. But now that I got it, uh, you know, we're gonna stream some old games. I hope to do that with the Super Nintendo, maybe the PlayStation at some point. I don't know. We're getting ahead of ourselves tonight with Genesis. Maybe the best console. I don't know. Maybe. And we're starting off with one of the best Genesis games! Streets of Rage 2. So we're gonna be Skate, who is the best character in Streets of Rage 2. And let's play some Streets of Rage 2. That's, that's all there is to it, man. Uh, Streets of Rage 2, much better game. Like most people, most much better game if you got more than one person. I don't. Maybe someday I will. That'll be ideal. I've got friends. They're not here, but I got them. Uh, I actually... First time I beat Streets of Rage 2... Well, maybe not the first time. One of the first times. That doesn't even make sense. I recently went through and re-beat Streets of Rage 2 uh, with my little sister. I played Genesis games and she was watching, and I'm like, I want to beat Streets of Rage 2, but that's really hard to do on your own. At least it is now, so I... She played with me, and... We beat Streets of Rage 2, and it was a great thing. Alright. So yeah, uh, first off, before we go any further... Uh, if anything's off, if the video is off, if the audio is off... Uh, let me know in the chat, or let's post some other way if you really want. I don't, I don't know. Punch this garbage can, and there's nothing in it. Nothing's in Chicken. This one has the chicken, or the turkey. Now this one's got a knife! Look at that. Uh, yeah, Streets of Rage 2, though, is great. Oh, it's just such a good game. The music, uh, really good looking for the time. Got this knife you can stab guys with. That's always great. Um. But yeah, no, this game just kind of fired on all cylinders. And this came out around the same time as Double Dragon and Final Fight, and those games were also okay, but uh, Streets of Rage 2 is where it's at. It's where it was always at. Like, Final Fight, that was dope. Mike Hagar is a dope guy. But, Skate. I mean, look at this. Look at the picture. Boom! Breakdancing. You know, nothing says young urban youth like breakdancing and roller skates. Oh, that's great. Oh yeah, so I said, I said earlier, the Sega Genesis might be the best console. And that's a statement that I will stick by. Uh, for me, 
You know, we uh, the podcast I do things and stuff. We recently had this conversation. Uh, some user wrote in and asked us what our favorite consoles were, and I came down on the side of the Super Nintendo, which I would do in a heartbeat again because. Super Nintendo. I think the only other acceptable answers for All Out Greatest are uh, the original PlayStation and the Sega Genesis. And while I do think that the Super Nintendo is the greatest, my favorite might be the Genesis. Like, I, do not get me wrong, Super Nintendo was great and had some incredible games, but there was just something about- oh, damn it, damn it. There was just something about the Sega Genesis that screamed yeah. I mean, it didn't have no mode 7. Didn't have. There was, you know, it didn't have quite the library that the, uh, that the Super Nintendo did. Uh, it did have a lot. The sports games on the Genesis were a lot better. Uh, your Maddens, your NBA Jams, all the Genesis versions were far better. You want football. Up until. Up until. The end of the Dreamcast, honestly, that was still uh, the the NBA or the NFL 2K series that Sega was putting out for a while there in the Dreamcast era. Those are still maybe the best football games, at least the best polygonal 3D football games. Like those, those were on fire, and it bums me out. You know, Madden snapped up the NFL license and kind of monopolized that, so you don't get. The NBA, two, or the, ah, the NFL 2K games anymore, which is sad because the NBA 2K games, which I've now mistaken twice, uh, are really fantastic basketball games. And back in the, uh, you know, up from the Genesis up through the Dreamcast, like sports games, you go to the, you go to the Sega Man, you go to the Sega Man, get him. Get this money. Break dance that sucker to death. And but and roller skate. Yeah, I don't know what I'm doing. I'm starting with the showstopper here. Streets of Rage is one of my favorite games of all time. It just it's just so cool. The enemies are really cool. The music is fantastic. Fantastic. Without a doubt, my favorite beat em up. The, the fat guy's gonna bust out of that bar any second now. I'm just waiting. Just waiting. It does it does feel weird. Uh, like I say, I dumped I took all my Genesis games and dumped the ROMs into the PC. And I do not know of an easy reliable way to hook up a Genesis controller to the PC. Oh what? The guy didn't jump out of the bar? Hmm. That's not. Hmm. Uh, but yeah, so playing Turkey! Playing Streets of Rage with an Xbox 360 controller feels weird. There's just something about it that doesn't sit right with me. Bam! So yeah, you know, you get you get your special moves, you got your standard fight em. Ah. You know. Standard beat em up. Attack button. Jump button. And then you also get that special move, which every time you use it takes away some of your health, which you no know, real risk reward type thing. Uh... You know, I, I wasn't joking. This game gets hard. Like, you go at it one one person is not the ideal way to play this game. It's less fun and it's it's just challenging because the enemies all focus on you and only you, so they all kind of rush at you. It's fine for you know standard. Standard fights like I've been going through, but once you get to bosses, it gets hard. You know, if you can come at them from both sides and kind of keep them off you at all times, it becomes a lot easier. By that metric, a lot more fun. Ugh. You did. Yeah, turkey, I know. Eat that dumpster garbage can turkey. That's what... Oh. Yeah. 
Oh, come on. Get up. Get up so I can knock you down. What? Break dance you to death. Oh, no! I don't have the hell. What am I doing? What am I doing? That's just... Boom. Alright. Amateur mistake. Amateur mistake. I, I could have made it through with another life. I don't know what I'm doing. Ugh. Alright. Timer is going. Uh, in addition to... Mm. In addition to playing Genesis games... I'm drinking moonshine. Because I have, you know... We made some apple pie moonshine this one time, and it was really good. And I want to drink more of it, and I'm almost out. So I'm gonna savor that flavor. You know, two great tastes that taste great together. The Sega Genesis and alcohol. What more do you need? You need that exploding motorcycle! And this knife! See, so yeah, the, the, those first... The first stage is not not super rough on its own. Uh, like you can go through that solo. You can go through. I used I used to be able to make it to like the baseball. I forget which stage it is, but like the baseball stadium. I could make it through that pretty pretty reliably solo. But that was back when I was a kid and had nothing but free time. I cannot do that anymore, so... We got this apple and this pipe. Beat that guy with the pipe. Oh. So, yeah. You know, we will... Oh, these motorcycle guys are dicks! No, my pipe! Boom, there we go. That's better. Bomb! Gold, sucker! You live on the gold standard here in the streets of rage. Oh, this music, I just can't get... Like, the Genesis had such... The games were just, The games just sounded so crisp. Like, there's a... There's a crispness, but there's... It's, like, also dirty? In a really, really good way. I know that makes no sense. But... Oh, he stole my pipe! Nah, nah, son, that's... So yeah, this is Streets of Rage. I'll probably... We'll try and finish this stage and then maybe go play, uh... Maybe play another Genesis game. I've got... I've got a bunch of them, both good and bad. Oh, no. You know, my collection is missing a few things here and there. Uh, I kept only a very few Genesis games from when I was an actual kid. Like, stuff from my actual collection. And the rest of the stuff I kind of just recently rebought on a whim. You know, I bought a bunch of random stuff. Uh, so I got, like... I kept my copy of Bamini Run. And I kept my copy of... I kept my copy of the mask. Boom, boom, boom! Look at that. Huh. See, yeah, with two people, this would be not even a thing. Like, this would have been over by now. But, just little old lonesomes. Not as easy. God damn it. Suck it. Boom. Yeah, I played I played shit ton of the Genesis back in the day. I actually oh god. You know. Mortal Kombat 2, that's another one of the 
the games that I saved from my youth because... No! You know, I... I... So, Mortal Kombat... Mortal Kombat 1 on the Super Nintendo was garbage. It was an atrocious piece of crap. And Mortal Kombat 1 on the Genesis... Well, not great, not up to the standards of the arcade, uh, was at least playable. I would, I would say maybe good. I would, I'd give it a light good. And then M Mortal Kombat 2 on the Super Nintendo was fantastic. But, I stuck with the Genesis just because, you know, I win with the logic, oh, this game was bad on the Super Nintendo. Like, the sequel's not going to be great on the Super Nintendo, so I got for the Genesis, which I actually, now looking back on it, I think the, uh, the Genesis version of Mortal Kombat 2 is the inferior, the inferior one. You know, they really brought it around with the SNES version of the MK2. God! Flying! But yeah, so I think I got a... I think I got a... Made that Mortal Kombat 2 on here. You know, by and large, like, Genesis had sports games. Uh, fighting games I thought were a lot better on the Super Nintendo. Both had their advantages and disadvantages. Both had great RPGs. You know, SNES had... SNES had Final Fantasy VI. Alright. Uh, Chrono Trigger, and then... Genesis had Fantasy Star. Fantasy Star 2 is a great game. Uh, but that's... You know, that's Final Fight. Not Final... God, what is... That moonshine's already getting to me. Uh, that is... Streets of Rage 2. So, we are going to switch gears here. And, uh, let's... Let's load up something else. Yeah? Let's, uh... Yeah, Aladdin. Yeah. Aladdin. That's what I'm talking about. Aladdin, another heated... Heated, uh... Debate in the Super Nintendo versus Sega Genesis discussion. Uh, because back back in this day, back when the Genesis and SNES were going strong, uh, developers would very often develop, you know, two separate games for the same property. So if you ever played Aladdin on the Super Nintendo, it looks nothing like this. It plays nothing like this. Sounds nothing like that. Like it is an entirely different game. The, to the point where the only thing that you can, you know, the only parallel you can draw between them is that they're both Aladdin. And it's actually a widely debated, you know, which version of Aladdin is the better because both versions of this game are great. Uh. I think in terms of, you know, graphical prowess, uh, the Genesis version, it's not even a question, it is incredibly superior to the, to the Super Nintendo. Uh, but, you know, Super Nintendo, when we, when I finally decide to, you know, mess around with Super Nintendo games, I'll take a look at that too, but just completely, completely different. Uh, music, I think, is better in the Super Nintendo one. I, as a game, I like the Super Nintendo one more. Uh, but, you know, just the fact that there are two games that are completely separate, completely uh, independent of each other, is kind of crazy. And you just don't get anything like that nowadays, where everything's, you know, you find sort of the... You find the weakest console, in a sense, and then, you know, you develop for that and scale down. You're sure as hell not, like, you're not getting separate versions of Call of Duty for the PS3 and 360 or 
the one in PS4, I guess, now is a better way to say that. But it's just cool, you know, and it was great if you had both because, you know, because both games were so great in their own right. Now, like I said, it's hotly, hotly debated in the video game realm which version of Aladdin is better. There was actually a panel at PAX East. Uh, was it this year? Earlier this year? No, I was, it would have been last year. This year is not going strong yet. But there was actually a debate where people were arguing the merits of both versions of Aladdin. And I, I like I say, I fall on team, on team Super Nintendo. I think I just played that one first and you know had a lot of fun with it. But Apple. Yeah. Aladdin. Apple. I've got all these apples. I don't need any more apples. Give me an apple. I forget how to use the apples actually. Uh yeah, so I, I, I definitely prefer SNES Aladdin. But they're both they're both really great. Really great. Watch out, Abu! Oh, Jesus. Oh, God. Oh, God! Alright. Having escaped from the gods, Aladdin was approached by an ancient beggar. The desert. Yeah, like Aladdin, no sword in the SNES, in the SNES version. Like, he had the apples. The apples, I guess, were also a common thread you could draw between the two, but at that point, you're, you're grasping for straws. Like, what are you doing? Whoa. Yeah, I, like, like I said, there's no question that I think the Genesis version of Aladdin looks better. Like, if you've played the SNES version, you know, like, it's not a bad-looking game by any means, but it is nowhere. Uh, oh, boy. This is how Aladdin ends. Am I going to get stuck here? Oh. Well. No? Not for sure. Oh, I bet I got to run up the trees, right? Yeah. But, yeah, so the SNES version doesn't look bad by any means, but the Genesis version is just... It's gorgeous, like this, it has the real hand-drawn style, it looks more like the movie than the SNES version does. You can tell Aladdin is Aladdin. Uh... I mean, you know, both games are great, both have, uh... Both have real fun level design. Ah, Yago! Both have fun level designs. Just a ton, just a ton of fun to play! You know, Disney back in the day, like, they worked with Capcom a lot on the on the SNES side, and they just made some fantastic games. Like, all the Super Nintendo Disney games, Aladdin, The Lion King, um, I know there's more than that. I know there's more, and I'm going to kick myself for not being able to think of them off the top of my head. Uh... But all those games were just, were just great. Oh, checkpoint. Oh. Yeah, that's another. You can't jump on enemies in this. That's that's what really, that's what pushes it over the line. It's not being able to jump on enemies. You gotta hit them. With them. Also, how do I use those apples? There we go. That's how you use the apples. Thanks, Abu. Stop it. This might be the end of Aladdin. There's, you know, yeah, yeah. So this is... But there are a lot of Genesis games to get through. So we will bid adieu to Aladdin. For now, at least. And, uh... So, that's Aladdin. 
You know, I, I know it seems like we're kind of moving fast for these, but I got, I got a lot of Genesis games. A lot of Genesis games. Uh, speaking of a lot of Genesis games, uh, we just went from a really good one. Let's go to a really bad one. Alex Kidd! Ugh! Oh, Alex Kidd. In the Enchanted Castle. Yeah, so this, this... If you're not familiar with Alex Kidd, this was a launch game for the Genesis. And Alex Kidd was kind of Sega's, uh... Oh, uh, this is... Of the rock, paper, so Alex Kidd was kind of the, um, they were Sega's, he was Sega's spokesperson before Sonic. Like, before they had Sonic the Hedgehog, back in the era of the Master System and early Genesis, like, Alex Kidd was, he was their guy. And that's unfortunate because Alex Kidd is a terrible game. It's a terrible game. A lot of it is this, uh, the rock, paper, scissors, mechanic. We'll, we'll take a look at that one more time. Car. So yeah, so you got this rock, paper, scissors mechanic. You're on the planet, rock, paper, scissors. And you got this whole rock, paper, scissors thing. Paper, rock, or scissors, whatever. And the computer straight up cheats. Like, it's terrible. It knows what you are going to pick in Rock, Paper, Scissors, and it will pick the opposite. Nope. I want to... I'm still getting used to, again, the 360 controller. Let's call it a tie? See? Like, no matter what I pick. So the, the, the solution to that is to just kind of mash on the button. And then... Theoretically, the computer cannot guess fast enough to cheat you out of a victory, but that's a real, that's just a terrible mechanic at that point. Like at that point, why have it in it all? Oh, why? Because it's a shitty game. Oh! Like, I mean, it looks okay for a Genesis launch game. It's nothing to write home about, but it's not offensive. The gameplay is what is what is offensive. Like that's nope, nope. Jump kick. <laughs> I don't want to play Alex Kid. I'll try one more Alex Kid, just just for the sake of. I said I would do this, man. I said I would do this. I would make it up. Let's play some Alex Kid. Nah, fuck you, Alex. You're. <laughs> You're a bad person. Okay. So yes, it's when you let go of the jump, that's when you get the... Okay, okay. We're not gonna do that. We're, gonna, we're just gonna go in Alex Kid till we die. How's that sound? And then we'll play maybe some better games. Maybe some worse games. You know, Alex Kid is terrible, but there are worse... All right. Nope. Here you go. All right. All right, all right. We'll do one more life. We'll do one more life. Just in honor of fairness to Alex Kidd, I will admit, even by Alex Kidd standards, I'm not playing soup. Nope. I lied. I lied. I really. I hated Alex Kidd, but I. I got my Genesis, and that was one of the few games that, uh, you know, I. I got with it. For Christmas, and that. Oh, oh, it's such a bad game. It's such a bad game. Speaking of bad games, you know what? Ah, no, we'll save. We'll save that one bad game. Uh, let's. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Hard driving. Uh. I don't know if anyone is. Anyone? If my friend Matthew is watching, I don't know if he is or not. I doubt it. But if he is. He knows hard driving. Uh, I almost make it a tradition now. Every time I go to visit him, I play hard driving. And 
hard driving is terrible! Oh, it's so bad! It is so bad! It is so bad! Car. Oh yeah, so this was put out by Tengen. The people... The people who made the fantastic RBI Baseball. And that's not... That's not... Irony. Like, RBI Baseball is actually... A f maybe the best baseball game. And it was on the SNES. Take that... You know... Do with that what you will. Baseball games aren't as good. I can admit that. But... So yeah, so this is a Tengen joint. And it's terrible. I can promise you that. Also, we're racing, and they have other cars, and here's a loop. Let's take the loop. The loop's always the best part. The loop is always the best part. Green off the road. Boom. Can we get that on replay, Chuck? Can we, uh, can we see that one more time? Yeah, perfect. <laughs> I don't know. When I, you know, when I... I, I enjoy playing bad games every now, every now and then. Uh, some of them are... I, I can in, I can ironically enjoy a bad game. Uh, a game we're going to take a look at definitely before the night is over. I'm not entirely sure when yet, but... Uh, Flicky is a notoriously bad game that I, I really... I really like playing for some reason. It's just... Some of these games are so bad. This game is so bad... Like, it looks like garbage. It sounds terrible. It controls so poorly. So poorly. And what... Let's see what happened there. <laughs> oh, man. All right, take that loop. Get back on the road. All right. All right, all right, all right, all right. Hit the bridge. Something cool happened there. Like, honestly, the best part of this game is when you're not playing the game and when you're just crashing in ludicrous ways and seeing what that does for you. It's pretty great. All right. Game over. Great. Uh, give me one second. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to post the link to this one more time. Just... See if more people want to show up and see some great, great games. Uh, so yeah, that's that's hard driving. It's not good. It's not even, it's not even semblance of good. It's uh, X Men. Yeah, let's try X Men. Oh. X-Men, baby. Uh, gonna take one more quick, quick drink. Look at Courage. So X-Men, I honestly... I honestly remember nothing about. Nothing. Not, not a thing. I have no idea what this game is. I have... Vague remembrance of what this game is now, I guess. I know that guy. Uh, welcome to die. One zero 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 one zero one zero one 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 zero 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 one. Uh, let's, you know what, let's, let's go with Amateur. Let's see if we can make some progress. Oh, does it not show you who the, uh, hero is? That's... Oh, okay. Yeah, I'll go Gambit. Let's go. Oh, God. I do kind of remember this now. I kind of, yeah. It's all, it's all coming back to me. 
Uh. X-Men! There were a lot of X-Men games in the SNES and Genesis period. Uh, ranging from, from the good to the bad. I don't remember where this falls on that specter. Like, spectrum. Let's have some fun, no? I know I loved the X-Men cartoon from the 90s. That was great. Oh, Cheetah Lady! Okay. I mean, so far this controls all right. It looks okay. I mean, there's nothing to write home about, but it's a, it's a fine looking game. Plays all right. And you know, especially if you compare it to other other superhero games of the day. At least on the Marvel side, I remember being pretty atrocious. Uh, the the two that jump to mind are Spider-Man and Spider-Man for the um, for the SNES, and I guess it was also for the SNES. But Spider-Man and X-Men Arcade's Revenge, which are both so bad. Arcade's Revenge, in particular, is just terrible. It's terrible, and I remember uh, just ragging on my mom to let me buy it, and, you know, it cost a lot of money. She was like, are you sure you're going to play some? I'm like, yeah, I'm going to play And then I played a lot of it. So I felt like I had to at some point, but it was a, it was a terrible game. It was absolutely the worst. Ugh. Now I'm stuck in here. Oh, there you go. Got that card. Gammon knows a thing or two about cards. Now, oh. I'm, yeah, you know, I, I, I don't know. I wouldn't say this is a terrible X-Men game. Like I say, it feels, it feels all right. It seems kind of. How in the hell do I get? No. Get, there we go. Here we go. Ah! Ha ha ha! You know. It's alright. It's got Gambit, which, you know, for me, that's a, that's a plus. Not enough X-Men games utilize Gambit, who is... Up there in terms of my favorite X-Men. He's Cajun. He's a Cajun guy with a bow staff, and he throws exploding playing cards. That's dope. That is really cool. See where this goes. Boom. I mean, yeah, there's a nice sense of progression. Like when I, uh, there is a better X Men game. I think it's just called. I think it also is just called X. Or no, it's like X Men Fight for Geonosis or something. And that was also a. A Genesis game, and that one I remember really liking. Which means I'm probably wrong, and it's probably terrible. Uh... Well, you know... This is not the worst X-Men game. There are definitely worse X-Men games. Oh, Jesus. Maybe. Yeah, get through me now, I got this card. What are you gonna do? Nothing. Real quick, I gotta... Why am I wearing a hat? Because I like hats. Oh wow, people showed up! Great! Hi, people who showed up. This is X-Men. I don't know if you could tell that. This is X-Men for the Genesis. It's okay! Me and the, me and the uh, three people who were here before, we unanimously decided that this game is okay. Not good. Not, not bad. But okay. Let's just, yep, there you go. When in doubt, run over the spikes. When in doubt, have Jean Grey lift you up out of the death. There you go. This game is better than Mega Man. Spikes do not kill you. Juggernaut will, oh, oh. Oh, Lord. Oh, you can double jump, kind of. Look at that. I don't. I don't know how you beat Juggernaut.
You, you know, yeah, I was saying earlier, I don't really recall this game, and now that I'm playing it, I actually do kind of remember this a bit. Oh, I don't think we're gonna beat Juggernaut. You know, we'll go... What is that damn bug thing? No, we're not gonna... Yeah. Also, I don't know if I'm hitting him or not. Also, I apparently don't need to be hitting him. I, yeah, what? Why would you do that? Why would you bring me all the way up just to die? What was the point? All right, we'll, ch we'll check out one more character. Oh, there's only four. Oh, okay. So apparently, that's kind of cool. So apparently if you lose with an X-Men, you just don't get to play him. You see, I can't go any further to the left and get Gambit, so... Uh... Yeah, Wolverine I know is good. You know, I, I want to try Nightcrawler. I want to see how they handle the teleport. Give me that. And then we'll, uh, we'll play something else. Huh. Alright. Cool. Is this a tiger's hat? I thought, I assumed this was like a duke's hat. I actually don't know. I just, I lost my regular hat today. Or not lost, I can't find it. So I guess it's lost. Like, it's in my house somewhere. I just don't know where, and I needed a hat when I went out earlier. And so I grabbed this baseball cap from the back of my closet, and here we are. Was? Hmm, Professor Xavier must be doing the danger of Wombs holographic projectors to simulate the savage life. Alright, that's enough X-Men. X-Men's fun. This game's okay. Okay. I might need to dig back more into that and see what's up. But, uh... Uh, Parkley shut up and jam. Batman Returns. Bamini Run. Bubsy. Good game or bad game? Decide quick. Good game, bad game. Let me know. I'm gonna go... You know, I'm gonna, I'm gonna go... I'm gonna go good game. I'm gonna go real good game. Should I save? Actually, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Here we go. Good game. Good game. The best game, sucker. This is actually one of the best Genesis games. I have no problem saying that. Do I own the what? No, sadly, I do not own the rights to Michael Jackson's Moonwalker. That is a tragedy. A damn tragedy, if you ask me. Look at that! I wish I owned the rights to this game. Look at how awesome this game is. Let Michael Jackson kick. Let Michael Jackson save this child. I could do that. Kick that lady out of the way, stand on this table. Walk on this piano. So yeah, uh, Michael Jackson's Moonwalker is one of the weirdest games to come out of the Sega Genesis, but also honest, like honestly, one of the best. It is, it's really fun, it looks good. It sounds awesome, like the use of Michael Jackson songs is really well done. Meow. So yeah, oh, the cat hurts. Oh, God. F that cat. So yeah, in Moonwalker, you are Michael Jackson. Uh, this is smooth criminal Michael Jackson. Oh, so I got this monkey. The monkey is pointing me to uh, where I need to go. So here's the cool thing. So first of all, there's a way to moonwalk in here. I don't remember how. You gotta do something weird like press back at the same time as you're walking forward. Uh, so yeah, so then this happens. Ha ha! You'll never catch me. And then I fight. But here's the best thing. So you can spin, and when you do this long enough, this happens. Look at that. That's incredible. Zero G lean, and then everyone just dies. It's magical. Oh, and the kid's like, Michael, 
Oh wait, okay, this is actually better. This is actually better. <laughs> oh, it's so good. It's so good. It is so good. Uh, but yeah, I mean, uh, honestly, you sound like a raving lunatic. Every time I talk to someone about this game, they look at me for a second like I'm crazy. I'm, then I look at them and be like, how have you not heard of Michael Jackson's Moonwalker? This is one of the best Genesis games. And you, you get crazy looks, because you think, hey, Michael Jackson, Sega Genesis game, saving children. Not only is that ironic, allegedly ironic, sad, uh, but it just doesn't sound like, even if, even if it wasn't burning with, you know, the ire that Michael Jackson got late in his life, like, it just doesn't sound like it would be a good game. And yet, uh, I, I, I truly do believe that this is one of the better Genesis games that is, you know, that was ever made. It's, the music is great. Uh, there is more than, there is more than this song. There's more than this locale and this song, actually. It goes pretty deep, like, you eventually get, uh, you get Beat It, I think. I, I think the next set of levels, Beat It is the song that plays. I want to say, I know Thriller is in here. At some point, you can do the Thriller dance. Uh, and then, uh, what, uh, this, off the, off the wall, I think? I can't, I actually can't remember. I think there are five Michael Jackson songs. I know three of them off the top of my head, but they all sound really cool. I think, uh, Crew Ball Game I'll take, I'll take a look at in a little bit. Uh, there's just something about licensed music like this played through the Sega Genesis that I think sounds really cool. You know, Crew Ball, the Motley Crew pinball game, has a few Motley Crew songs that have been all Genesis-ized, and they, they sound awesome. Everything about this game is awesome! Sega Genesis is awesome. Look at that. Kick that stuff. Flip it. But yeah, so the game is pretty much this. You, I never saw the Moonwalker movie. I think that's what it was. I think it was a movie. So there should be one more child, as you can see by the indicator in the bottom right. And then once you get all the main kids, the monkey shows up. And the monkey's on you, and then he runs away. Haha, he'll never catch me. And I'm like, no, I totally will. And then they all come in, and I'm like, oh no, what am I going to do? You're going to shoot me? But that's okay, because I can do this. And we dance. Oh, like I lived. What do you know? Who's bad? Michael. The Udo. Ooh. Ooh. It's really good. Man, Michael Jackson, that's that's just Michael Jackson back in the day was so great. I mean just the fact that he he allowed dumb shit like this. Like, you won't, you won't get stuff like this nowadays. None of these new fangled musicians are going to be like, Hey! Put me in a Sega Genesis game. I'm trying to think of the last time that actually happened that, like, a famous recording artist, like, allowed themselves to be used in a game for any meaningful purpose. Like, I mean, Grand Theft Auto has stuff like Axl Rose being a DJ and... Well, I guess just a lot of artists being DJs, but, like, I'm trying to remember the last licensed game based off a musician, and I'm having a hard time. Like, the two that come to mind immediately are Crewball and Moonwalker, and both of those games, I think, are fantastic. Crewball is one of the better virtual pinball machines I've ever played, like... Alright, so we're, we're gonna try, uh, we're not gonna play a ton more Moonwalker, as much as I would like to. Unless you people want me to keep playing Moonwalker, I don't, uh, I would, I would gladly play Moonwalker all night. But, uh, I think we're gonna kick that lady out of the way. Like, just the way, look at the way he walks. Like, that animation is just really good. Like, it runs smooth, it looks great. Um, walking up the stairs can be a little tricky at times, but other than that, all is good. Guy shot Michael Jackson. He's like, nah, I'm gonna dance it off. 
Uh, I, I do want to... I think there are... There's either one or two more uh, little of these stages. I think there's one more after this. One more stage. Uh, how do I get that down? There we go. One more stage in the uh, Smooth Criminal section. And then, you know, we'll hear Beat It, and then we'll... Then we'll say adieu to Michael Jackson's Moonwalker. And let that be that. Sometimes kids hide in the windows. Sometimes in the doors. Also, Michael Jackson is attacking these guys with magic and dance. Like, what? This would never, ever be made today. Ever. Monkey. Who's bad? Who's bad? Bad! I think bad is the, actually the other song that I was having a hard time thinking of. Yeah! Like, I know, the, the idea of... Oh, just, just two this time? The idea of Michael Jackson running around saving children and playing with his monkey. Like, this 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 was obviously made way before all, all that bad stuff happened with Michael Jackson. Oh, you know what? I think this guy might be the boss, actually. Oh no, I'm out of magic! What am I gonna do? Oh no. Come on, Michael, come back. Do I have to find all the... Oh no, if I have to find all the kids again, that'll maybe be the end of it. Okay, okay, good. Yeah, we'll just, uh... So yeah, I think that, I think that guy is the boss, kind of, of this stage. So we'll do this. We will see... I'm... I'm... 90% positive that Beat It is next, and if I recall, it's a really good version of Beat It. I think that's Billy D. Williams, actually, if I recall. Like, my limited knowledge of the Moonwalker movie. I know it was someone famous, and I want to say it was Billy D. Williams. I might be completely wrong. What a dick. Oh, yeah, see, now, now, I've, now I've done it. I don't have enough magic to, uh, to dance into death anymore. Then all I can do is punch him. And that's no good. Alright, great. I think we're gonna hear I think we're gonna hear beat it now. Which is a pretty good beat it. And then uh Yeah! Look at that. Who's bad? Boom. Boom. I think it's beat it. Yeah, look at this! Oh, it just keeps getting better! Oh, it's an explosion. That's a dog. I, th I magic that dog away. So yeah, you know, the game progresses on like this. Uh, that's kind of all there is to it. I mean, that sounds reductive to say it like that. Oh, I, I, this game is really fun. Unironically, I think this game is really fun and one of the better Dreamcast games. Er, Dreamcast. One of the better Genesis games out there. Cops! Alright, so we'll finish this stage up and then we'll. Oh no. A dog got up there. We'll finish this up and then we'll move on to a different. different game. And then, uh, I don't know, we'll do. I've got a lot of Genesis games, so I'm not gonna do this all in one night. But, you know, we'll get, uh... Oh, no! We'll do... Two or three more, depending on how long we play each of them, I guess. Oh, I bet the child's in the dumpster. Yep. Ha ha ha, you'll never catch me. You say that every time, and I'm eventually gonna catch you, because that's how video games work, son. Come on, dance, 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 yeah! And yeah, he even has a different dance for every every one of these. For every song, it's a different dance. Like, It's just really good. It's really good. Let's do it one more time. Oh, and then yeah, sometimes if you don't have enough for the dance, he throws the hat, and that's also really good. You know, your attacks get weaker if you don't have the magic, and it's just... It's a very smart game. Alright, so that... that... is Michael Jackson's Moonwalker. Oh! 
uh, like I say, I want I want to do a few of these streams. I've got more than enough Genesis games. Like we're not going to do even close to all of them tonight. And then I've also got a bunch of uh, a bunch of Super Nintendo games. So we'll maybe revisit some of these that people like. Uh, <laughs> won't revisit others. Uh, so let's go. Let's go. Bad game. Close out on a good game. That sound all right? Like RoboCop versus the, yeah, we'll say RoboCop versus the Terminator. Uh, let's go. Let's go with Clay Fighter, Booger Man. Uh, there was I just saw one. Flicky, yeah. I said we do Flicky. Let's do Flicky. S O R three. I don't know what S O R three is. Thing. Sword of Sedan. Yeah, Sword of Sedan would also be good. Whatever. Uh, no, so we're, we're... So this is Flicky! I was talking earlier about, uh... Oh, Bare Knuckles. Someone apparently in the chat knows what Flicky is, which, God bless you, that's... I'm surprised I know what Flicky is. <laughs> so, you know, I talked earlier about liking some bad games in an ironic fashion. <laughs> Flicky is absolutely one of those games. I don't know why I like Flicky, but I know enough about Flicky to tell you it is terrible. I did pick already. So yeah, so uh, the whole picking thing... Like, if you don't know, Twitch has, like, a 10-second delay, 10-15 second delay on. So I'm saying something, doing something, and then it takes 10 to 15 seconds, I forget which it is, for you to actually see it. So you write me asking what should I play is kind of broken unless I just allow 10 seconds of data, which might not actually be terrible. I don't know. I could probably, I could probably do that. But, uh... So, yeah, so... You know what? Actually... This is actually kind of like Flappy Bird in a in a weird way. It's the same. It controls terribly, which is a lot like Flappy Bird. It looks terrible, which is a lot like Flappy Bird. It involves a bird, which is kind of like Flappy Bird. So yes, what I'm saying is Flappy Bird ripped off not only Super Mario Bros. People always jump to that like, oh, the pipes are Super Mario. No, ripped off Flicky. Flicky. Uh. So yeah, so we're gonna play Flicky. I just thought of something. Tell me now uh, if there was a game you would like me to play next to close out the night. Uh, just name a Genesis game. Chances are I'll have it. If I don't, name a few just to be safe. Uh, I have most of the big ones that you could probably think of. So make your move. Help Flicky guide bird exit to the door. Press button to jump and shoot. Rack up a super score. Let's play Flicky. So in Flicky, you're a bird. I actually, I actually kind of like the music in Flicky. Like that's not one of the. Oh no. So yeah, you're Flicky. You have these things. You collect these flower pots and then you shoot them at cats while you are saving these birds. Why? Because why not? And then you take the birds to the exit and victory. Yeah, so yeah, this is this is absolutely a Genesis game. Oh god damn it. I looked away for a second, look what happened. This is a Genesis game, all the games I'm playing tonight are Genesis games. Uh both good and bad. <laughs> look at this! This looks like shit! Oh, it's so bad. It's so bad. But I, I really like it. I don't know why. You grab these hammers and other things. And you film, you take the birds out, and victory. And this is... Yes, this is... This is Flicky. Oh. Ah, I missed one bird! I missed one bird! 
one little... Yeah! You know what, like, I, I, I actually really do like, like the music in Flicky. And, you know, so you see they're, like, uh, you can drop the birds off any time. You can drop them off with just one or two, but you get a bigger chain if you stack them all up, so that's kind of the incentive to, to do that. Yeah. Chirp! Chirp, Tiger, and Iggy. And apparently that's... I thought Flicky did have some kind of... So yeah, the thing with Flicky that had a lot of people confused is that a lot of people thought it was an arcade game. Because, I mean, it kind of looks and plays like an arcade game. You know, the whole uh, bird dying mechanic makes you think, oh, you know, this is... This is just an arcade game, but no, it's just a shitty Genesis game. I don't know what those big metal things are. I'm missing a bird. I'm missing. Oh, there's the chirps. Hey, you know, it loops around. Oh, god damn it! God damn it! All right, here we go. Here we go. We got it. Grab that chirp, chirp. Chirp. Get those chirps. Oh, so that's where the cats come out of. Alright, that makes sense. I guess. I'm sorry, this is poor Flicky play. I know you I know you came here expecting pro big flicky plays, but I I'm just I'm just rusty. You know, it's My dad. My dad paid what was it? Like, I think my dad paid fifty dollars for this game. Like, I, I, I think that was honestly it. I think that my dad almost kind of forced me into liking. It. He's like, you know what? We paid fifty dollars for this. You're damn well gonna like it. You're gonna play it, and you're not gonna complain. And I'm like, but it's terrible, Dad. And he's like, I don't care. Like. I have two regrets. Oh, you can jump. I have two regrets when it comes to buying video games that cost a ridiculous amount of money. And now, one of them was Flicky. Which, $50 for this is ridiculous. That's outrageous. But it's not as outrageous as when I made my mom buy me a copy of Superman 64 for the Nintendo 64 for the low, low price of hundred and twenty dollars because that's what that's what N64 games cost it was crazy it's crazy that's enough flicky that's enough flicky uh... alright so... so let's see here uh... one more game no one suggested anything so I'm just gonna, I'm gonna open this and I'm gonna scroll through slowly I think you can see the games so you you just shout out one in the chat that you want to see. I'm going to hope you pick a good one, but I would understand if you decide not to. You know, we got the hunting star and poltergeist. That was, that was a weird game. Uh, Mortal Kombat 1 and 2. Mighty Morphin Power Rangers the movie. Mickey Mouse. That, that was one of the Disney ones that I was thinking of. I don't... I don't even remember getting Pinocchio. I don't know what that is. Road Rash. Since his games are god awful. Battletoads. Okay, Battletoads. Another bad game. Another bad game. I want. I want to have fun. And you guys, you pick Battletoads. So Battletoads. Battletoads. Battletoads gets a lot of notoriety because it was notoriously di it still is notoriously difficult. But outside of that, like I just I don't I don't think Battletoads plays well. Like as far as what it is, I mean it's you know the Battletoads property is just a straight up hey Ninja Turtles are popular. How about we take ninjas and turtles and turn them into Battletoads? Because that's you know. Which I can understand that thinking, you know. 
Ninja Turtles were very popular around, around when this came out, so you know, yes, you want to get in on that money, but you don't have the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle license. Oh. So yeah, people people remember bad. Yeah, people remember Battle Toes for being really hard. Like if you look at, if you were to Google hardest video games, like top twenty hardest video games, this is. Uh, there's no way this is not gonna be on there. But, like, and, and they're right. It is notorious. It is very difficult. It's a tough game. But I also just don't think it's very good. Like, it's just not... It's not super fun. The music is okay. The music... Like, that's the thing. Even the worst Genesis games, I can usually at least enjoy the music. And, you know, yeah, this music is pretty good music. But, as a game, it just... It doesn't... Like, the movement feels real sticky. Like... And this is kind of a problem with all beat em ups, I guess. But especially here, it seems like up and, up and down just doesn't feel right. It takes a minute to get moving. Uh, you know, as far as attacking, that's it. Like, there's no... We played Streets of Rage 2 earlier. Which, uh, yeah, Streets of Rage 2 is absolutely more advanced, so maybe it's not fair to expect the same kind of thing, but... But, like... Streets of Rage 2, even Streets of Rage 1, even Final Fight, even early beat-em-ups, you know, Ninja Turtles, they had things where you could, like, there were other moves. Like, there there were combos you could do, you could, you could hit enemies in such a way that they, you know, that it would do a different moveset. This is... Ugh. Yeah, and also that is a good that is a good thing to point out. Like, Battletoads did come out on uh, the Genesis and the Super Nintendo. The Genesis version is even worse. Like this is like Battletoads for the uh, for the Super Nintendo is not anything to write home about. The Genesis version just I mean it's been a while. I have not played. I rented Battletoads on the Super Nintendo thinking it would be like an Aladdin type deal where they're two different versions, and I honestly can't remember if they are or not. I just know that Battletoads for the Genesis is the one that I owned, and I might be wrong. I'm not wrong about Genesis Battletoads. This game is bad. I, I might be wrong about SNES Battletoads. All right. Oh, okay. That one is on me. I'll admit that. Sure. Nope! Maybe it's not. Maybe I... Alright, you know what? I don't want to play Battle Toads. I'm gonna do one more. I need to wash that taste out of my mouth. I lied. I'm sorry. If you... Yeah. Battle Toads is bad. Uh, let's do, uh, let's do a little... No, yeah, we're gonna close out on crew ball. We're gonna. Ah! Look, look, you can see his face in the little doctor thing up there. Uh, bare knuckle three. I do not have bare knuckle three. I will. Since you asked, I will I will get Bare Knuckle 3. I've been on a recent binge of like ordering old games. So I do not have Bare Knuckle 3 at the moment. But I will I will order Bare Knuckle 3 just for you. Corkscrew Blow 32X. So yeah, crew ball. Crew ball is a pinball game. But not just any pinball game. A motley crew pinball game. And I was talking earlier about how great, you know, Michael Jackson's Moonwalker was with Genesis versionized, uh, Michael Jackson songs. I think Crew Ball is even better in terms of Genesis sounding, uh, Molly Crew songs. Like, listen to that! That's just a... Uh, it's just great. It's got a music demo. Like, look at this. Yeah. 
was great. So we'll, we'll get to the music test. We'll close on that. But yeah, so this is... Uh, Fair Knuckle 3 Streets of Rage 3. I never actually played a ton of Streets of Rage 3. I will, I will, I will get Bare Knuckle 3. For you, my friend, I will get Bare Knuckle 3. Okay, so this is Crewball. Not a scratch. So, Crewball is, you can tell, is a pinball game. And I'm usually not a huge fan of virtual pinball machines. I think they're usually... Because uh, the thing with pinball, I'm a big pinball fan. And the thing with pinball that you gotta, got to, got to get right is the feel and the physics. Like, the way the ball moves is very important. Uh, the way, you know, physics works, it's just really hard to do. It's so important and crucial to the pinball experience, and it's just, it doesn't often get done well on virtual tables. And I think Crewball is one of the, certainly not the only, but one of, one of the few that I think gets the, uh, the virtual pinball. It gets the feel of the pinball right. We got this going on now. Okay, there we go. So yeah, so Crewball is a multi, multi-level pinball machine. You know, you kind of got to do that with virtual pinball since you don't have... Oh. Alright, so here we are. We're up... God damn it. Ugh. So yeah, the, the, the funny thing about Crewball is that... As I said, it's a Motley Crue pinball game. Didn't start that way. Motley Crue actually did not come into the picture until very, very late in the development cycle. This was actually going to be a... This was going to be like a futuristic kind of pinball... Like, everything they had here was kind of all set. And then, like, for money reasons, they like, We need... We need a selling point. Because what we have here is not... I forget what the name of the pinball game was going to be. It was like... Hard... Hard rocking or something like that. I forget. But it wasn't going to be a Motley Crue game. And then, you know, this was at the kind of height of Motley Crue's career. This was late 80s, early 90s. You know, all that stuff was going on. And they're like, like I'm not entirely sure how it came to be, but they're like, hey, Motley Crue. Pinball, right? Match made in heaven. What could, what more could you ask for? And that's how we got Crewball. So, you know, there's only there's only three Motley Crue songs in here. Uh, there's Livewire, Dr. Feelgood, and Home Sweet Home, which seems like kind of a weird choice for a Motley Crue song, given the tone of the rest of this game. Uh, but it actually really, really... Oh, no, no, no. They're all really good versions of this, of this, uh, of these songs. So, you know, you got that. Uh, you get over here... You launch, charge up the ball. I found the sweet spot's about 720-ish. Because you launch it, and it goes up there, and wherever it lands, you get bonus points, which is nice. But yeah, I mean, you can kind of tell, looking at this, that this is not really a Motley Crew game. It wasn't what they set out with. Like, what are those things? What does that have to do with with Mick Mars and Tommy Lee? And nothing. Nothing. Not a damn thing. So, you know, let's add uh, three Motley Crue songs and uh, that Dr. Feelgood guy at the beginning and put Motley Crue's name on it and let's sell pinball. And that was what they did. And it actually, uh, you know, I don't think Motley Crue adds a lot, but it's a, it's a good pinball game on its own. Uh, so, yeah, so what you're hearing, this, this music is not Motley Crue. I don't know, you might not actually have been able to nail that. Uh, this is not a Motley Crue song. So, like I said, they only got three Motley Crue songs. Came in late. They're like, we can't give you all the Motley Crue songs. That would be way too expensive. So you get three. They took their three and like, well, that's not enough for a whole pinball game. We need more than that. So they got Brian Schmidt, who is actually uh, a well, well-renowned, almost, I would say, legendary uh, pinball composer. Like, he did the music for... For Black Knight, I believe he did the music for uh, for the Star Trek The Next Generation Pinball Machine. Like, he is a great, great composer of pinball music. And they're like... Oh. They're like, come in and, you know, come in and make us some pinball music. So it's, you got three Motley Crue songs, and then like seven or eight... Uh, 
seven or eight songs by Brian Schmidt. And those songs I actually think might be... Like, the novelty of the Motley Crue songs is not lost on me. I think they are great, and I think they sound awesome spun through a Genesis. Uh, but the Brian Schmidt songs just sound like great pinball songs. Like, this music is great. This is some good music. Um, so yeah, so you get four balls. You can get extra balls, of course. It's pinball. You do all that. And then, like I said, this is a leveled pinball machine. So down here at the bottom, you've got all this. That stuff's cool, whatever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, if you... If you get this little diamond section here, you saw earlier there was... It, like, popped up a bunch of blocks. And once you pop up those blocks, if you get rid of all those blocks, you can start lighting that part of the board up. If you light it all up, then a ramp appears. And if you hit the ramp, it shoots your ball into space, where it then plays Motley Crue songs and turns into, like, a 2D side-scrolling shooter. Which is crazy! It's it's absolutely bonkers. It, it... And like that's just one part. So up here, you see we're we're spelling headbanger. We're knocking those those down. And we're spelling headbanger. So once we spell headbanger. Oh god damn it! Once we spell headbanger, we'll we'll get back up there and you'll see it. Uh, yeah, so once we spell headbanger. That, oh, wow, okay, this is great. So yeah, so once you spell Headbanger, this section opens up, and you want to bust that open. And once you bust that open, if you can shoot it in, you can shoot the ball in. Yep! No! Damn it! You can, so then you crank it up. You turn the volume up, and it changes the layout of the board. It's, you get a new song, uh, board layout changes, and it, and it goes on like this. And I believe there are... Seven, seven different volume levels. So that's seven different songs. Seven times the board kind of changes. And now you see instead of like those weird hair monsters and worms up there, we have floating poser heads, which is. I mean, yeah, so someone pointed out in the chat, seems kind of, kind of empty for a pinball machine, and I think, I, I'm of two minds about this, so I like my pinball one of two ways, you know, I'm, I'm not a huge, well, like I said, I'm not a huge fan of virtual pinball to begin with, because it takes, it takes a lot to, you know, there's so much that can go wrong. There's just so much that can go wrong. You gotta get the ball feeling perfect. Uh, and yeah, it, it, it is kind of an empty table at first, but like I said, you saw the win up, you got the volume levels, changed the board. By the... I've, I never made it, I think, past the fifth level, but at that point, it, it starts getting kind of hectic. And it's pretty, it's pretty cool. It's pretty great. So all that happens. You go to space, it turns into a field. Like, there's a lot going on. And what I like about virtual pinball is you either have to get, you either have to make the ball feel perfect. The ball has to feel perfect and it has to feel like good pinball, or it has to be something so ridiculous that like you can't get it on a real table. Like crew ball, you cannot get on a real pinball table, but with the varying levels and and all the stuff moving around and like that, like you just can't do that on a regular pinball machine. So I want it one of two ways, and Crewball goes for the latter, just tries to make it as crazy as you can. And I think it works. I, I think this is a really, really good pinball machine, pinball game, not technically a machine, but... And then, like I said, you know, down here we got the music demo, so let's, you know... Got... Got Home Sweet Home, we got some Motley Crue, you know, Mickey Six, Vince Neil, Tommy Lee... And I actually, I was actually playing Crew Ball the other night, and I was listening to these, and I think this might actually be my favorite of the Motley Crue songs they put in. They make it sound really awesome. Like, it's... It's pretty, it's pretty good. Uh, I'll let, I'll let it play to the solo, and then scroll through the rest, and... You know, Crew Ball, Crew Ball was just really good. Like, it's not, by any means, the greatest... Not even the greatest virtual pinball machine out there, 
Uh, but just the, the novelty of like, hey, Motley Crue, shoot into space and play kind of a bad Galaga for a while. Like, it just had a lot of charm to it that, you know, I've only grown to appreciate with age. Like, when I first got this game, I actually didn't know who Motley Crue was, and now I can appreciate it on a whole new level. So my laptop battery's running dead. We're going to close out on Motley Crue. I want to thank you all for watching. Uh, feel free to send me more suggestions for Genesis games or old games. Uh, I'm going to be playing more. Uh, I'm going to, you know, if you've been watching, I'm going to do another horror, horror week, horror day, night thing, probably on Wednesday or Thursday. Um, so go to Metal Gear Rising. Uh, but yeah, I, I want to definitely go through it. Now that I got it working, I want to play more Genesis and Super Nintendo. More older games, more 8, 16-bit stuff. So if you have suggestions, I will get to work on Bare Knuckles 3. Anything else, feel free to send me suggestions. The weirdest, the best, the worst games you can think of. Just toss them at me. I'm trying to build a collection up, so do that. Uh, do that, and then I'm going to close it out for the night. Thank you all for watching. You are a great audience. I hope you enjoyed this little trip down memory lane. There will be more to come in the future. I've still got a bunch of Genesis games alone, so we're not going to not gonna run short anytime. So, uh, that's all for now, and until next time, oh, also feel free to tell your friends, family, anyone who you think would watch this or get a kick out of it, feel free to toss it my way, twitchtv.com slash jcowhand126, where you're watching this. Like it on Facebook, subscribe on the Twitter. Just tell people, I don't care. The more people, the merrier, that's what I always say. So that's, that's all I got. Have a good night.